40% of Cameroon's population suffers food insecurity. Out of Cameroon 24.1 million people, 40% live below the poverty line, with the country ranking 151 out of 189 in the 2017 Human Development Index. According to the War Food Program, Cameroon's country briefed of August 2019, instability has left 136,399 refugees and 437,354 internally displaced persons in addition to the vulnerable local host communities requiring food assistance. Poor road infrastructure, land degradation, outdated agricultural practices and fragmented markets severely limit people's access to sufficient nutritious food. Seven regions in the country, which includes Extreme North, Adamawa, North, East, Northwest, Southwest, and West, face food insecurity. According to a statistics report from the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, dating March 2019, Far North, Northwest, and Southwest account for 85% of the total food insecure people in the country. Reporting, I am Achno Kwamo. In Cameroon, um, it is known that the farmer who farms actually is the guy who goes home without food. My occupation is business. I buy and store goods when they are expensive, then I sell them. So I join in with farming. I buy, when I was in Dubai, I used to buy rice and store with corn. When around this time like this, I just move them out and sell. I cultivate beans, granite as you see, corn. Even jama jama. As I'm working this granite like this, by the time I'm harvesting, it's, it's I, I take people for daily daily job now. We come and harvest it together, like two to three or four bucks. Then I will call a bike to come and carry it to the to the market. When I harvest it, by this time, as it is rainy season time like this, I just preserve it to be dry. By the time I'm just harvesting, if it reaches a small quantity like this, I put it inside the back. If it's, uh, if it's raining, I look for leaves and cover the back with it so that rain should not penetrate right inside the back. Mm -hmm. So when I reach the house, 
I remove from the back and air and so that air should and air the, the vegetable so that it should should be lighter. In the morning now I put it inside the bag and carry it to the market. Uh, my name is Roland Formunda and uh, I would say I am the brain behind uh, the company Greenhouse Ventures. And when you talk about production, the key thing you're looking at is technology. What technologies could we use to increase production at a particular scale? Uh, the Greenhouse technology is, we call it the mother technology of all because it is the one place in which all other technologies could be embedded in. Um, so of course within the greenhouse um, we get more harvest per year compared to outdoor farming. We use less amount of water, less amount of labor, less amount of resources compared to outdoor farms. We're able to harvest about five times uh, what you would harvest outside for the same amount of land. Uh, we're able to promote high quality agriculture, so organic at any level uh, within a greenhouse. So for me, that is why we call it a mother technology. Another technology we don't have here, we have a transplanter, which is used to transplant seedlings. Uh, it's something I can show you another time. But again, it reduces the transplantation of seedlings. And it also increases efficiency by a greater percentage. Um, many things we also be okay our drip system we have what we call a fertigation system which means that we're able to put our fertilizer in our water and then fertilize as we go along that enables us to avoid a lot of waste you know instead of flashing throwing you know fertilizers almost where you don't even have the plant um, having it in the water actually waters at the point of the plant so there are several technologies that we can bring in here. The greenhouse technology itself, we can use it as a drying component to dry things, you know, produce like cocoa, coffee, dry fruits as well. Uh, we also use this technology to multiply seeds of a particular variety. So if I get a tomato variety uh, that is high quality of high breed, we can multiply that particular variety. And expand on that so there are many things that we can do within uh, this house one of the advantages of using a greenhouse is that we are able to our products are able to uh, have an extended shelf life so my tomatoes that I have this year will last at least 30 days on the shelf without any refrigeration uh, they are actually harder than regular tomatoes and uh, when I talk of 30 days on the shelf compared to outdoor grown tomatoes that will last at most seven days. That's a big difference. Which means that you can take to market and come back and take to market and come back numerous times without them getting uh, bad. Uh, the other advantage is the fact that uh, growing in the greenhouse structure, you are able to time our production. Like you see here, we've planted in 50% of the farm. Uh, by the time we start to harvest, we plant on the other section which makes sure that we always have a harvest and we always have a market. So we've been able to develop a system called a just-in-time system, which enables us to sell everything before we even get to harvest. So it helps to minimize a lot of waste uh, amongst that. The other aspect, of course, preservation would have to do with drying um, and the greenhouse structure uh, is also being used uh, for drying produce, depending again on how you do design it. So I do believe that, of course, with the solutions that we do have in place, they can go a long way to increase production and also preservation of produce, uh, thereby minimizing post-harvest losses uh, for a lot of farmers. We face a lot of difficulties because the road rain, rain has spoiled the road and the road is just muddy. So the difficulties I face 
is the income. I don't have enough income to to increase. Because if I if I had enough income, I will not face so much difficulties to feed the children. Even now, you see grass is growing inside the if I was having enough money to to remove the grass quickly, the farm could have been clean. Yeah, the farm is dirty because I'm just getting little little money for the vegetable I harvest and sell. So when I go today, as today like this, I will harvest, sell and pay those people tomorrow. So the next day if I if the vegetable if there is not from to harvest, so I will just come and try by myself whether I can just with a small portion. As I have five kids with my husband, so all of them they are here with me, schooling. The problem is because I I have I have so many children. They eat and they eat two times a day because in the morning I leave the house. The, what I prepare for them, they will eat, come back from school, and eat. So at times when I prepare, the, those little ones go to bed without eating. They eat only in the morning. I, I get support from my husband. This is not enough. The farm work is not enough for me. Mm -hmm. So if I was, if I have enough money, I will see increase bigger farm than this before. It's sufficient. The land is available, the soils are fertile, yet there is a food crisis. Income levels are low, families are large, and farming methods not so productive. Poverty, armed conflicts, outdated agricultural practices, regional instability, environmental shock, and poor harvest losses contribute to the insufficiency. Today, there is so much talk about greenhouse farming that seemingly is near being capable of mitigating waste and other issues of conventional farming. But to what extent can the greenhouse approach address food insecurity? It, it is not easy for everybody to have food because the in Come is little. So many uh, people come from uh, uh, Bafusam to buy in bulk to go and resell again. I don't, they are the ones to sell and gain. I just supply to them. Food doesn't get to some people in time the way it needs to get. So for example, if you wake up at 4 o'clock here in Douala and go to our main market which is Marche Sandaga, we have trucks that come from the western region at 3.30 and they supply food there. So you imagine that you have food has to come six hours away and it comes only to a particular market because from Sandaga now the food leaves from Sandaga and it goes to other areas. The one that even goes out to Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, the one that goes to Nigeria, the one that goes to uh, Yaoundé, the one that goes to QOC, all of that. But these are because these areas that get the food are, are, are places that have a ready buyer. What about those in the villages? Do you know that in Cameroon, um, it is known that the farmer who farms actually is the guy who goes home without food? It doesn't really make sense. And this is because the farmer produces and sells all the good food and then what is left is bad for them to even be able to consume so we have a, a, a systematic problem to it which of course answers your next question that the government also has a little bit of work to do in that area which is creating systems that will allow for the good preservation but not only preservation but also the supply chain of food so that food can get to populations when it is still very fresh and in ways that they actually can actually consume it. And we have with a lot of outdoor farmers is that they produce and then they start looking for a market. It doesn't work that way. 
you have to identify your market and then you produce for that market because if you already had a market for everything you're producing then it means as soon as you have it you're taking it to market just like how you have coffee and cocoa farmers grouped in cooperatives every coffee plant you see or cocoa plant you already see already has a buyer uh, if uh, um, other farmers did that method then you will realize a situation where they minimize all the losses or a lot of the losses and maximize the profit potential in their farm so for me the advice would be that they need to secure their markets before they go to produce and people shouldn't just produce because other people are producing uh, if you realize in Cameroon over 80 percent of farmers grow the same thing either they are doing coffee cocoa or they are doing palm trees they are doing tomatoes pepper okra one and the same thing whereas there is so much more that needs to be grown and this are some of the things that advantages that we have here within the greenhouse I eat twice a day, in the morning, during break and after school. There are many different types of foods in our school, like uh, frying, there's peanut, there's chin chin, there's bread, there's uh, mayonnaise, there's other types of things. That woman bought every everything for me, not so because she know what she's buying. Mm -hmm. She know that the, that vegetable is good. There are some still in the market right now, and they were there before me. So she knows what she's buying. When I come back with the remaining one, if I don't if I don't sell everything, when I come back with the remaining one I I just fix and prepare for the for the for I'm prepared for, for children. People have always believed that one, agriculture is for the guy who lives in the village, it's for the poor person, uh, it's for the uneducated person, and it's for the older person. Agriculture today is being practiced by our parents, and that needs to change if we believe that we need to feed the larger population. Of course, there's an estimation that by 2050, the world is going to double so which means a place like Douala where we are which is about three million right now we get to six million Cameroonians are under producing as much as they produce more than other countries in Africa and I believe that the under production is just due to their limitations in know-how farming is still be done by our parents they are tired so that needs to be replaced most of the youths today don't feel like agriculture is a thing for the future. We have a lot of schools that teach agriculture, but we have very few farms that have trained youths on it. And that's a very big problem because all the youths, they graduate from agri agricultural schools, they rather want to work in the offices. So until we can get to the point where youths are actually involved in the production, then yes, we can begin to meet or hit sustainability uh, between the consumers and uh, what is actually being produced.
Any job that you do, whether what or you must improve farm in your work that you are doing. Anywhere. It may take more than just in house farming, maybe more engagement of the youth population. As of now, agriculture is predominantly carried out by the aging population, which accounts for a relatively small percentage of Cameroon's population. Do the math. It seems to me the reality of who is in charge needs to change. Collective efforts to overcoming the limitations on people's access to sufficient nutritious diet can result to zero hunger, hopefully. <laughs>